All right, guys, today we're going to talk about my top 10 favorite slash most EDC knives currently in the collection. And I try to make a bunch of videos talking about the different knives in the collection because I make so, or because I have so many knives in the collection. So I try to keep these uh, videos reasonably up to date by making different, uh, different types of videos talking about my favorite knives and of course this is always kind of like a moving list but anyways um today we're going to talk about these 10 knives go over them real quick and explain why they spend so much time in my pockets all right guys let's start off with the hogue deca and there is no real order to this chaos but the hogue deca for me has to be one of my favorite more affordable knives and i think it is the cheapest knife here on this display but i think that this knife honestly offers a lot of value and is a super lightweight super thin blade and normally i would throw a benchmade bug out on this list but the deca for me has really replaced the bug out and honestly i think especially with this warncliffe blade is a more strictly utilitarian blade and of course this could always be pushed into some kind of tactical circumstance but as far as Warncliffs go, they tend to be a little bit um, less tactical and more practical. But this blade is super lightweight, super thin, super slicey. And honestly, that's why it spends so much time in my pocket. And like I said, I used to carry a Benchmade bug out for things like workouts, running, trail running. But the Deca is fastly replacing the bug out because this thing can do everything that blade can, but just a little bit better. All right. In a similar kind of fashion, the, the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 is a very similar blade in my mind to the Hogue Deca and previously the Benchmade Bugout. It's just a really great slicey utilitarian blade. And this one for me is a little bit special because it is a, you know, uh, so overall this one's a little bit special because it's a cutlery shop sprint run, but at the same time, it is a paramilitary too. So it's very basic, very functional and super useful. Overall, I have kind of a video coming on the deck and the paramilitary too, really explaining why I just love simple, super utilitarian blades, but that is why it makes it on this list. Like I said, the colors and the sprint run and the steel kind of just spice it up. All right, next one up is one that I actually was never expecting that I would honestly like as much as I do. Not to say that I don't like Emerson knives, because I do, I have a few in my collection, but uh, this Emerson Minicom or Mini Commander has been spending a lot of time in my pocket. And I think that's because realistically, it's at a good size. It's just a step or scotch bigger than something like my XM18 three inch, which is my usual go-to for small knives, which we'll get to in just a sec really checks off a lot of marks on the list for an awesome EDC blade and not to mention I am or personally have a soft spot for recurves as I've said many times but the Minicom just works super well and is super fun to carry so that is the next one up like I said I never expected that I would really like an Emerson that much but I do so this one and soon to be replaced probably more by my gavco which we'll talk about in a little bit is usually my go-to small carry blade and this is of course a hinderer xm18 in the three inch size and honestly i just really like it for a it's a low profile small um overall size but yet because of this blade's generous forward finger choil you really can choke up on it and get a comfortable grip like full finger grip on this and have a good amount of control over that blade and so it's small size good controllability and in my opinion really good ergonomics has lended its hand to taking its place essentially as my go-to small edc blade so while this is usually a little bit smaller than what i like to rock that's why it has seen so much carry time now, on to the next one. We'll talk about my go-to for water, food, and just overall a well-rounded EDC blade. The Spidey Chef doesn't necessarily have any exact times when I will EDC it more than another knife, unless I'm doing like very 
like water or if I'm gonna be around a lot of water, I should say, or if I'm snowboarding or doing stuff like that where the exposure to moisture and humidity or water goes up, then I will usually choose the Spidey Chef. But I also really like the Spidey Chef because it is super, super thin, super lightweight and extremely slicey. And overall, it's also a blade that's not very tactical. So if I'm going into like non-permissive environments or environments just that kind of frown upon blades, this is another one that's very high up on my list. Now I will say it's not my favorite knife to open primarily because you can't really spidey flick it. You kind of can if you do it just right. But uh, as far as the actual blade goes for performance, I mean, it really is like a folding chef's knife. So what's not to love about this thing? Um, and the LC200N blade is once again, very, very corrosion resistant, but also super easy to put a very, very wicked edge on. And that is exactly what I have done with this one. I have touched it up. I've touched it up just a little bit on my wicked edge and made it even more slicey, but it is already incredibly slicey to begin with. But yeah, that's my Spider Coast Spidey Chef. If for some reason you don't already own one of these, I would heavily recommend it because it's not the type of blade that you use like every day for every application and it's certainly not the most industrial, but it is a really handy blade. All right, last kind of workhorse, uh, or actually maybe not the last workhorse, but this is probably my go-to workhorse blade. This is my ZT0562. I keep calling it a 462 for some weird reason, but it is a 562. This one obviously is the carbon fiber variant of it, but this is one that I got used in a trade and I have reprofiled. I laid back the edge to a 17 degree per side, made it super, super slicey. This is in 20 CV or CPM 20 CV. And this one, as you can see, is is just a workhorse it is you know pretty pretty well loved there are some chips in the blade um, from hard use previously that I've kind of worked out some of them and not quite yet worked out some others but overall this blade is just kind of my go-to user and it's one of those knives that while I do love my hinderers especially this one I'm not the most um, excited to do industrious or potentially tasks that would damage this one's blade. So I like to have my ZT because uh, this is a blade that shares a lot of characteristics with my hinderers. It is a hinderer collab, so it has a lot of the same like ergonomics, but I'm not afraid to abuse or be extra hard on this blade. So that's kind of how this one comes to be and why it gets some serious carry time is because I love hinderers as a whole, but I don't love abusing my hinderers. So yeah, this is kind of my hard user or workhorse as far as that goes. All right, last one up that is a workhorse is my Strider. And this one tends to be my go-to for like wilderness carry. And I do carry this one quite a bit when I do like different hiking and um, just different field tasks. And usually I will rock like a dedicated fixed blade, like maybe my Bark River Knives Bravo um, or my Bark River Knives Bushcrafter or sometimes some other blades, I have quite a few. But when it comes down to folders, I will usually rock this one because I know that my Strider is built to be tanky. It, the blade especially can take a lot of abuse. They are heat treated lower or to a softer degree than most other steels. So this is a little bit more equipped for kind of just more industrial or industrious tasks. In fairness too, I will also say that I'd probably carry my Emerson for the same reasons, but my Strider and my Emersons are kind of my go-to for more industrial or hard use folder tasks outside of my ZT. Because the ZT is also there for hard use, but this is a little bit more of a slicer. All right, so now we are finally down to the top three kind of um, maybe more, I don't wanna say safe queens because I don't exactly have because I don't exactly have safe queens. I do carry all my blades and use them as they come. But these are definitely my three more favorite knives to carry, especially for kind of higher end or like more dress occasions. I don't know, I don't really dress up per se, but if I'm 
wanting a knife that makes me super happy, these are my top three probably super happy knives. So first off, we'll go with number three. And this guy here is a CRK Large and Cozy with micarta inlays. And despite what many people may think, as I have been um, kind of against the hype of Chris Reeve knives, and certainly there are a lot of influencers, promoters that love to hype up Chris Reeve, I still think that they do make a lot of excellent products. Obviously, I have many CRKs. Uh, the Pacific is one of my favorite outdoor survival knives, but the Large and Cozy is just one of those that originally it um, was the Chris Reeve knives Sebenza 25 before kind of going through some slight modifications to become the Encosi. But this blade is just amazing. I love it. I've loved the Encosi for a while. It took me a while to track one down. They're surprisingly not super easy to come by. So they are not always the easiest to find blades, but I did find mine and I really like it. In fact, it's very similar to my Sebenza 21 but this guy uses S45 VN steel. And yeah, it's just a really nice knife, super comfy. I actually personally like the Ergos of the Nkosi a little bit more than the Ergos of the Sebenza, but both are timeless, both are super classy. And yeah, I really love this knife. There's not too much more I can really say about it, but it is one of my more preferred knives for just higher end uh, occasions. And it is fun to whip this guy out and use it for EDC purposes. So definitely love it. It makes me very happy. It's, it's one of those things where once again, when we get into EDC knives, undoubtedly, I think one of the best parts of EDC isn't just collecting knives that are cool, but knives that personally make you happy, personally have a backstory that is or is not connected to you. And ultimately, you know, just makes you happy. So that is, like I said, number three. Number two up on the list, and previously number one until this guy came along, is the the large or 3.5 inch Hinder XM18. And this one is uh, modified slightly. It has skiff ball bearings in it. It has aftermarket um, purple and black G10 scales, and it has a aftermarket purple um, liner in there and so I know I've talked about this knife a ton but I could still talk about it a ton it has a 20 CPM 20 CV recurved blade and so because of all of those things it is not only a super smooth blade and has a great detent and action it is just an awesome knife I love recurves personally and this blade what makes it um, even more um, preferred for me is it has just about the perfect size as far as overall length and that three and a half inch blade length. Not to mention because this is an XM18, similar to my small XM18, it has a very generous forward finger choil. So you can choke up on that blade, get really close to it for fine cuts and tasks, but also still have a very generous handle to hold and to use. So this is one that is definitely number two for me. I absolutely love it. Carry the heck out of this blade. And it is another knife that definitely makes me just straight up happy. So that is the Hinder XM18 three and a half inch. All right, last one, save the best for last. If you're still watching, then congratulations. You get to see more about this little blade. So this is my custom uh, Gavco Nurse XL Hunchback. And this one is just, I wouldn't say necessarily full dress, but pretty darn close as far as custom knives go. This one has a ton of custom work to it. And it just is beautiful from the Timascus clip to those beautiful handles. Once again, this knife, similar to the previous one, has purple handles and purple kind of just accents, you know, to the pivot and such. But this one is super beautiful. This is my only and first custom, like full custom blade. And I absolutely love everything about it from what this knife is to the maker, to the design, to the execution, to the handles, the colors, everything on this blade is what I would want. And ultimately that is why I ended up going for it. If you know, custom knives are definitely not cheap in the slightest. So obviously you really have to be motivated to buy one, but this guy is definitely one that I was motivated to buy and absolutely love it. That Warncliffe is very cool. And once again, as you will continue to see with my top knives, like some of my most favorite knives, they have generous forward finger choils so that you can choke up and get a good grip. I am very much, and I think this part 
partly draws from my survival background, but I am very much a fan of forward finger choils to get good secure grips on your blade right next to that cutting edge. I like being right on that cutting edge for good control when you're doing different cuts with your blade. So there's that. And then of course, also being a Warncliffe, you have very good control over the tip for doing things like opening packages and stuff. So anyways, this is a full custom Gavco Nurse XL. It is beautiful. I love it. And I do EDC it, even though this is probably the closest of all my knives to being a safe queen and does actually spend time in the safe just because it is an expensive knife. And so, yeah, it gets treated a little bit differently with a little bit of preferential treatment, but for sure, um, one of my favorite knives. So anyways, guys, that is my top 10 knives for now. I say 2023 but it'll probably change. Though these top three are probably gonna stay in that rotation as the others change and vary. So anyways, guys, that is all for now. God bless and I'm out.